few days ago somebody asked me if I would do a video on my favorite fall winter perfumes and that's what we're going to be doing today. I usually do videos like this and really break down everything about it, who the perfumer is. I'm big into perfume. I've been big into perfume for a long time since I was a teenager. Um, not buying so much anymore because I have 100 bottles of perfume at least and tons of samples and trades from back in the day when Makeup Alley let you do that. So a lot of these things are not new. I would say nothing here is new, but they are all gorgeous. We have some vanillas, we have some woods, and we're going to get into it right now. Let's start with Ormond Jane. Ormond Jane is a UK brand and used to only be available in the UK. You would have to get it shipped and they used to have discovery sets. I'm not sure if they still do, but now Ormond Jane is here in the United States and my favorite scent from this line is called Taif. I have this in the Pure Parfum and the uh, Eau de Parfum. It is a stunning rose scent. Most people think rose and spring, but this is a warm, ambery rose that has this radiance about it. It's both, it's like, I picture colors sometimes when I think about perfumes, and this is a circle that is almost pulsing very gently, and the center of the circle is a beautiful pink, not too vibrant, and as the circle gets larger, it turns warmer into a yellow. I am going to tell you some of the notes. The top notes are pink pepper, but I really don't get that in a big way. Dates for a little bit of sweetness and saffron, and I really love saffron. Although, I generally find saffron to be very cooling, and some of my favorite fragrances that I use in summertime have saffron. This is not a cooling scent. It has a liveliness, a sparkle to it, but it doesn't actually have notes that sparkle. There's also jasmine and orange blossom. Orange blossom and jasmine, I both love, but that's not what this is about. This is about rose and amber and warmth and an effervescence about it that is stunning. It's, it's just insanely beautiful. It's just insanely beautiful. I always wear this during the holidays. Um, haven't had holidays in a couple of years now, but I used to wear this on Christmas Eve and on New Year's Eve. It's the kind of thing that I like to think anyway that pulls people closer. I once made a little decant for somebody and she put this on and somebody had walked by and said, someone smells gorgeous. I totally agree. It is a beautiful, beautiful scent. And I'm actually wearing it today. I actually shot this video earlier, but I, was, I wasn't I was well prepared. I was kind of spacey, so I thought I'd reshoot it. So I am wearing all of this right now. I sprayed it all over myself. Such a beautiful, beautiful scent. Now I have some vanillas here, so I'm gonna break up the vanillas a little bit. We have from Van Clef and Arpel Orchidee Vanilla. And this has, oh, look at this little charm right here. I just saw that Saks is still having their 15% off sale. Today is the last day. Today is Friday at 11.59 Eastern. And I hope I can get this up in time um, for you guys. But I just had to reshoot this. This is so, so beautiful. This is a vanilla that doesn't scream vanilla. It's soft and it's balanced. Let me read you a little bit more about this one. They say there's mandarin orange in here and lychee and bitter almond, dark chocolate, Bulgarian rose, violet, vanilla pod, cedar, tonka, and white musk. And I think it's probably the white musk that kind of gives it that um, very soft kind of feeling about it. Don't worry about all the florals. To me, I don't really get the florals from any of these, although there's florals in them. I get the vanilla, but this one, in just such a soft, beautiful, balanced way, it's not something that's going to enter the room before you, although there is some sillage to this. 
and it's not something that screams vanilla like the vanillas of yesteryear, not too far ago actually, that were just, they just smell like vanilla. None of these smell like you're cooking in the kitchen. They're far more interesting and sophisticated than that. Now, let's get out of vanilla for a minute and go to Shergui from Serge Loutons. This is the first that I ever got from Serge Loutons. I think it might be the most famous and it's the most wearable. He makes a lot of interesting scents and I've bought many bottles and I have treated many bottles away and this is one of the only things I have left, if not the only thing I have left. This is my second bottle and it's not very often that I buy a second bottle because I have so many bottles, but I love it. Let me tell you what they're saying about it. It is honey, tobacco, and incense. And I am saying there is a chewy darkness about this. It's enveloping and yet there's something a little bit spicy about it. I think of a spice stew. For instance, it doesn't smell like this, but just imagine if you're making mulled wine and it just renders down to something thick and chewy. A little bit of that with the tobacco and the honey. And the, it's more like pipe tobacco. There's a sweetness to it and a warmth to it. And it's one of the scents that to me, out of everything that I'm talking about here, it doesn't seem to move that much. In other words, for most perfumes you have the diamond, right? You have the pyramid, you have the top notes, which are often citrus, lemon, orange, whatever. Then you have the base, the medium notes, not the medium notes, but the, the mid wave. And that's when it really comes to bloom. And oftentimes it's just 15 minutes after you spray it. And then you have the base notes, which all the other flowery stuff fell away. And there's just this low grade hum. This one doesn't seem to do that. It, just, it, it does have an opening. And 15 minutes later, it matures, and it kind of stays, to me, in that zone all the time. That's where it stays. All the fun doesn't just fade away, and you have this nice hum at the bottom. It's delicious, warm. I oftentimes get compliments when I wear this one, and I love it this time of year. This packaging is old. They have different packaging for this, but this is Tonka Imperial from Grillon, and I love all of these, you guys. I love all of these. This, mm. oh my God. Yes, Tonka. Yes, Vanilla. <laughs> Let me look at my notes. Bitter Almond, Vanilla, Jasmine, Tobacco, a little bit of frankincense, and a little bit of honey. It's so special, and I cannot remember the word for it, you guys, because words are, are sometimes hard for me. But there is a beautiful flower that is oftentimes associated. Etro makes it. I have it. I don't want to get up. But that's the same thing as the bitter orange. I don't want to go on and on and on, but this is very, very special. I'm going to spray, even though I'm wearing everything in the world right now. Initially, there's a bit of a boozy nature to this. And then you get such a beautiful balance. I do sense a little bit of the frankincense. I've never thought about it before because I have something else coming up that has more. But it's a beautiful balance between that incense, the tonka, the vanilla, and there's a little bit of something bright, but it's not too bright. Oh my God, it's such a sophisticated, beautiful vanilla, and I love it this time of year. Woods, I love a woody scent. In fact, for me, fall, winter, that's my favorite kind of perfume. This is by Parfumerie General. It's called Cashmere Number no. 18, and it feels like putting a cashmere wrap all over your naked body. It has this uh, insane softness and milkiness about it. Milky sandalwood, coconut. It feels warm and delicious. And this is one of those that has this beautiful low-grade hum throughout the entire wear. 
it's almost hypnotic. And this is another perfume that I bought a second bottle of. Very, very rare because I have so many. I wore this all the time when I first got it. I love it so much. It's smoky and a little, little bit powdery. It has some cypress and myrtle in it, so there's some other woods going on. It's just insanely beautiful. And there's a little bit of a coolness to it, too. Let me check these notes. I wonder what that is. A citrus aromatic, they're saying. They don't say which it is. I do get a little bit of that. Again, so well done, so beautifully balanced, so delicious for this time of year. And then the final one, I mean, I was going to do two more, but one of them is sadly discontinued. I'm just going to honorable mention, if you're an eBayer, Seven Veils from Burrito. Um, you know, some perfume people thought this was a little bit insipid. I did not. It is a version of an oriental. It's largely carnation. If you are a gardener and you know what carnation or dianthus smells like in the garden, not at the florist, you know that it's warm and spicy and playful. And yet there's a depth to this. It really has an oriental structure. And it's interesting that I don't have orientals here. I I mean, there's, flor there's several kinds of orientals. And when I first got into perfume as a teenager, I was heavy into Cinnabar and uh, Youth Dew from Estee Lauder and the one from YSL, Opium. Those were my things. And this is kind of in that vein. It's that kind of oriental as opposed to a floral oriental. Or um, I think they have a white oriental and one that they call, it's called a cola oriental where it has a very deep dark base to it. Not around anymore, but if you like that really kind of peppery, spicy carnation thing, that is a good one to look at. And then I was so surprised to see that this is still available. This is Vanilla Tonka from Parfum de Nicolai, and this is a glory. This is a bigger bottle than some of the others. It's 100 ml. So I would be on my second bottle, if not for the fact that this is a big one. And this is an underloved brand. Patricia de Nicolai is the great-granddaughter of, I think, think the perfumer behind Rouen. These companies have been around for a very, very long time and she's no longer creating scents for them. I think her son is, but she has a beautiful nose and it's, I guess we just didn't get a good distribution in the United States. A beautiful, beautiful line, but this is one of my favorites. I have two favorites. And I'm just going to read a little bit. What's so interesting about this? So we have the Tonka, we have the vanilla, right? It opens with a brightness, with a greenness, which is so surprising because nobody mixes a green with a vanilla. It doesn't sound, and that's what's so great about this line. She just does things that are a little bit different. So you immediately get that greenness in the opening and it is from lime and then it gets that warm hum thing going on and that is the vanilla. There's a sweetness here but it's not sickly sweet. It doesn't smell like you're baking even though there is a sweetness here and I think part of that reason is this is the one where although they say this has incense or frankincense I get it here. There's a little of a smoky nature to this, a little bit of that frankincense. The greenness has gone away, the vanilla and the tonka is there. It's, of all of them, it's the one that's the most foody, but not like you're baking. It reminds me of an anglaise sauce, like a, a bread pudding with an anglaise. That's the foodie nature. Of all of them, the most gourmand. But funny, last night I was doing something and I thought, hmm, I'm, I'm really craving some of this. It's unusual, but not weirdly unusual. And it is gorgeous. Love it. And these are my favorite fragrances to wear when it's cold out. Fall and winter and delicious. There's a couple more. One of them is also from Guerlain. Is it also from Guerlain? Le Bleu. Is that Guerlain? I think it is. 
but the a vintage so when I was on makeup alley all the time you would do swaps I have this and you have that and I want this and I see on your list that you want that and let's do a trade and sometimes they would send you some extras and I don't remember if I traded for this or if it was an extra but it was the most gorgeous iteration of Le Bleu and it was something she got so when I you know, got back in touch saying, I, I have to get this. And I was thinking, I'll, I'll find a bottle on eBay or something because I knew it wasn't what they're making right now, which is a little bit different, which always happens with perfume. And she didn't know, but it is insanely gorgeous in chilly weather. And yeah, but I mean, I'm just talking here. It's not something that you can get. And I have no idea if it's an EDP, an EDT, what year, what vintage, nothing. But I have a little bit of that. I rarely use it, but this is the weather to bring that out if you happen to have a vintage. And that's going to wrap it up, you guys. It's nothing new, but they are all stunning in these months. And if you have any questions, let me know down below. I love the perfume talk. And until the next one, uh, ciao.